Hello, okay, welcome back to the channel. Now in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this new Firebase alternative called Superbase and really talking through how this is different to Firebase, how it can potentially solve a lot of the issues that you get with Firebase, especially when it comes to scaling and just how this could be used going forward in a number of different ways. So I've been using Firebase um, as my main database in a number of different projects now for the last five, six years, and it's great to get started, but there becomes a few issues as soon as you're looking into that point where you're getting you know, more than 10,000 registered users, you have lots of data in the database, when it comes to actually have a lot of people trying to access this, caching becomes quite difficult, and you get a few issues like this. Now, Superbase is a potential way that you can solve a lot of these issues, so here you can see on my screen now the sort of home page of Superbase. Now, rather than um, you know, Firebase is no SQL, so it's not a traditional um, MySQL database or anything based on this, which has its benefits. But when it comes to um, scalability and you want quick database sort of interactions, that can become quite tricky. The Superbase has all of the benefits of Firebase, you know, in terms of real-time subscriptions. So you can say, you know, let me know if someone makes a change on this uh, part of the database, and you'll fire that back instantly. Um, so you've got all of that benefits, and it can also handle authentication, same way as Firebase can. So you can use this in a number of different ways. Basically, any way you could use Firebase, so including Chrome extensions, websites, apps, um, anywhere really, you can use Superbase as well. So let's take a quick look around um, the site to begin with, just to get a quick overview of what it actually does. So as you can see here, they're billing themselves as the open source Firebase alternative, which from what I've seen so far, it really does. Like it does that job really well. Um, just to mention, I've only been using this for a couple of weeks so far. So it's not like I've um, had that point where you get to that scale yet, where you have the real issues with Firebase, but from what I've seen, it can cope with that a lot better. Um, they're backed by Y Combinator and Mozilla. So like we mentioned, it's open source. So again, here you can see right now they have the database and authentication. They are looking to be adding storage, so similar to Firebase storage and functions in the future. But you know, I can't really say too much on that yet because it's just not there. Um, but I'd imagine that would be similar to the way Firebase does that. And they have a lot of um, quick start projects you can use to sort of get a feel for how this works. And I've tried a couple of these, particularly around the authentication so far, and it is really easy to get started. And you can use this um, with Next.js, for example, on Versal and just spin it up straight away, um, which is you know pretty cool. So the way that they've got these quick start apps that you can you know, have a look at, see how things are structured, is pretty useful. Um, and as you can see here, their documentation is, is really good. So similar to Firebase, they help you um, show exactly what you need to do for each of the different um, things you might need. So if that's creating a new user, um, reading information from the database, updating it, deleting it, they've got all of these examples right here. So you can just click through here and see um, these different examples and you know put this right into your, into your code. So you can really see how this can be worked. Um, if you're building a Chrome extension, which I've done a lot of um, videos on the channel so far about how you can use Firebase in a Chrome extension, I'm gonna create another video later this week looking at Superbase within an extension. So this will be for Manifest version two and version three. So if you're um, interested in how you can actually add this into a Chrome extension, I'll add a, uh, a card you know, on, on YouTube up in the corner somewhere. Um, so you can see that as well. And I'll put a link in the comments once that's up, which will be later this week. Um, so you can see how quickly you can add Superbase into your Chrome extension because it works very similar to Firebase in terms of that, but it's just, it scales much nicer. The only thing I'll say right now comparing this to Firebase is, and this is one of the issues with Firebase as well, is the pricing. So you never really get too much of an understanding of what your costs will be. So if we just look at the Firebase pricing page here, so they have the free plan, um, which sort of gets you hooked into it and then there's these different costs. So as you start to grow, you can see down here, you get a gigabyte of stored data, that's with Firestore, um, but where is real-time database? Here you can see, so you can have 100 um, simultaneous connections, so that's 100 individual people connecting to your database at any one moment in time. 
you can have one gigabyte of actual total database storage, which sounds like a lot, but as you start to scale up and have lots of users, that gets eaten up pretty quickly. And then in terms of transfer a month, you can have up to 10 gigabytes, which as you grow, doesn't last that long. Um, but as you, you know, you can have this paid plan here, um, which goes up in, in different levels, um, but that can get expensive pretty quickly. So that's Firebase, and you know, I'm just skimming over that there, but that's sort of the main way that is structured. You can use their pricing calculator to see how that would work. Um, but with Superbase, at the moment, they haven't publicly announced their pricing yet. So that's a bit of an issue, you know, saying all this without any clear pricing there. Um, but they are open source. So if you really wanted, you could spin up a, um, a DigitalOcean droplet or you know, a server on Amazon like EC2 and install it on there and then grow as you need to. So that is an option because this is all open source. But if you sign up um, now, so before they were, when they were in alpha, you could get two years of free basic tier usage. Um, and if you sign up now, you should, should still get one year free usage. Um, so it's definitely, I definitely recommend signing up, trying it out and see how that actually fits into whatever you're trying to build because you know you definitely wanna be looking at the database is the core of whatever you build and you want something that's gonna scale and be reliable. And from what I've seen with Firebase, it's, it's great up to a point, but after that it gets really, really complicated if you try and do anything. Um, so looking into Superbase, I really recommend and see if that fits what you're trying to use because it's based on, you know, it's based on SQL, it's not NoSQL. So the amount of things you can do is so much more tried and tested in terms of search as well, which is near on impossible with Firebase. Even pagination becomes really complicated, but with Superbase, this is potentially a lot easier and a lot more, um, there's just a lot more ways you can grow. So this is Superbase. I'll just log in now into my account. I've got a test account there and just show you what it looks like um, compared to Firebase again. At the moment you can log in with GitHub, so you need to have a GitHub account to do anything. So once you log in, you can see your tables like this. So this is um, just a blank uh, database I've created. So you have tables here and I can just create a new table. So if I add in, say, uh, let's just call this example, example table. We're gonna have our primary key as ID. So when I first started um, using this, it had been a while since I'd used any SQL database. So I forgot exactly about how you have your keys and your different you know, set types because of the way Firebase and NoSQL was sort of, it's just JSON, um, even MongoDB, just you can choose your own structure. But it's actually quite nice to go back to this, you know, set um, key and type based, type -based uh, database. So anyway, let's create this table um, no spaces are allowed, just put a dash in there. So here is our table, so it just will spin up and create this table for us. And then very similar to Airtable, you can just add new rows or new columns into this table. So, but once you've got that, you can then add in uh, your information like this as well. So that'll automatically generate the ID here, and you can just click save and there you go, and you can create another row uh, in here as well, automatically generates it. If you want to add another row in here, so say another column, so say name, we choose our type. So let's go down, select this, save, and there we have it. We can you know update, update this in here. You can edit your um, your columns by just right clicking over here and then editing. It took me a while to notice that to begin with, um, and then over here, where is it up? Over here, you can directly type in SQL commands for your um, for your tables, um, which is a much better way of interacting with your your database and your tables compared to Firebase, where it's you can't really do too much in in the actual um, console um, with Firebase. So this is a lot of uh, options there, and you can straight away um, get customized docs for your particular tables and your database. So if I scroll down here, you can see it will already show how I can connect. Um, to this database. So if I go down here to authentication, it puts in a key over here um, and all the code I would need to start um, creating new users into my, my database. And if I go down here for my actual table I made just there, it shows how I can um, pull data from this table um, right away. So it customizes the documentation based on what you've actually 
um, put into your database and set the tables and fields. Um, so yeah, this is just a quick video showing um, just my first thoughts on Superbase so far and how this could be used in your, um, your projects and your, your apps that you're creating. And as I mentioned, I'll create a video later this week showing how you can use Superbase within a Chrome extension for both Manifest version 2 and Manifest version 3. So if you'd be interested in more videos looking at Superbase, just let me know in the comments. But otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.